So the 9800X 3D is a pretty fast CPU. Let's just be honest, it's the fastest gaming CPU on the market. But that doesn't mean that it is not able to be a little faster. And today, we are going to be fully maxing out the 9800X 3D. Previously, I've dropped videos on like explaining what proper settings you should use on a 9800X 3D, what proper coolers you should use. That was actually a member only video. And one thing I noticed is that this CPU does get a little warm still. Nothing crazy. It can encroach 80 degrees when doing a benchmark, but for most, it's just pretty fun. Sitting at like 60 C in games, no issues. But Derbauer has this, the D-Lid Dimate. This is the Ryzen d litter for AM5. And this is basically the answer to any performance withdrawals I might have from the 9800X 3D. But if just simple, you know, D-Lid doesn't work, there's also direct die. That's right, today we will be D-Lidding and also direct dying my CPU, the 9800X 3D. Back in December, I picked up the NHD 15 G2 and that will allow me to put this back on like so. Perfect. And this is just gonna slide back and forth, back and forth. And then we're gonna use these screws. Through my university for less than $2, I was able to print this just ABS plastic, nothing crazy. And then I went to Lowe's and for like $2, got a bunch of M4 by 10 screws. I'm ready to direct die, super duper simple. You can also, I think, pay like $5 and not too will send it to you, all the stuff you need. But $5 was too much, I needed to pay four. So let's get into the video. Main thing though will just be, we're gonna see, okay, what are temps like before? Let's delit it. Let's, you know, see how it is with the D-Lid. And then after that, we'll take it apart and then do my favorite part, the direct die. And see, do you really need a direct die or just D-Lid? Or is all of this pointless and I'm just wasting my time and breaking my warranty? Well, I guess let's see. Okay, so for this, we will be using Cinebench R23. Why Cinebench? I just feel like it is the best thing for this because it's super fast. It's kind of like a gaming load in that sense, but you can also get it hot. This is with the NHG 15 running on turbo which is, let's look at fan speed. It's running like 600 RPM right now. Let's start it. Let's see what fans go to. The fans will go to, oh, I'm hearing them starting to ramp up like a thousand RPM, not even crazy. But 80 degrees, 81, and that is at 5.3 gigahertz. Let's wait for the score and then we'll see what happens. That's actually the main thing though. So. 82-ish, nothing crazy. Like, this is still warm. This is warmer than you'd expect in a game with a package power of 150 watts. And now let's see, we got 23606. This is with PBO plus 200 curve optimizer, all that stuff. Hyperthreading's on, obviously. But now, let's delid the CPU. Took it out. If you're interested in why this video is actually delayed, it's definitely because I forgot to bring this screwdriver back with me and it's the only one I could use to get it out. But now let's just lift this up. I don't think it's still connected. Maybe, hold up. There we go, look. Great thermal paste spread. Great on here as well. This is with the offset mounting in case you're interested on the Noctua. I'm now going to actually take apart the thermal right frame and then put on the stock frame because I'm going to put the socket cover on. Definitely, if you are spending a large amount of time without a CPU in the socket, put the cover on. I don't care if you live in a clean room. You don't want anything to get in it. Break your board. This is a $500 board. Here is the D-Lid kit. So we're going to start by, I did clean off the CPU, try to get as much thermal paste. That side isn't perfect. It should be fine though. So let's put it down in here, it's orientation so that you don't mess it up. And now we just gotta put this back on like so, perfect. And this is just gonna slide back and forth, back and forth. And then we're gonna use these screws to tighten it, bring it closer this way, loosen it, tighten it this way, bring it back and forth. I'm not gonna film this, this is gonna take forever. I'll be back when I'm done. All right, it's been like, I don't know, 40-ish minutes. It's been a good bit of time. Let's take this out, and then we'll be back. Here we go. Here's a 7800X 3D die. I will say the IHS is way heavier than I thought, and this is super duper light. 
which is good to no oh, interesting um yeah now i gotta clean all this off i'll be back i swear it's been like two hours but here we go finally have the ihs deleted with the liquid metal on it so perfect and the ihs with liquid metal we're gonna try this out we're gonna put the cooler back on just over there loot llama and uh let's see what the temperatures are like I am using KPX for the thermal paste. I'm not gonna manually spread it. I'm literally gonna be taking this off in the next 20 minutes. Um, affiliate link down below to this, to the, you know, the syringe. <laughs> but yeah, uh, affiliate links down below for everything I'm using. Let's get this cooler back on. Moment of truth, boys, let's turn it on. And what we get, oh yeah, we're back. We are so back. We are so back, chat. Here we are back in Windows, same, settings is whatever let's start the multi-core thanks iphone for not focusing and let's see we are getting 50 73 75 so let's see what power draw 152 watts so a little bit more power and same basically frequencies Let's see what this score is, but I think I have some thoughts before we actually go to the direct die. Remember, this is still with the IHS actually on it. Look how, like, nasty. Ew, there's, like, liquid metal on my hands. Ew. Let's see. And 24089, so a little bit higher. Really what I think what's happening is AMD actually did their job when engineering these CPUs and was like, oh, if we put the cache underneath, it gets a lot cooler. It dropped about 5 degrees, pulling more power, getting more frequency. So, okay, cool. That did help a little bit. But now it's time for the direct die frame. And there's a little bit something weird about this too. Because I have, where's the other one? Two of them. So back in October, I picked up this direct die frame. I actually got it in a bundle with the Dealer die mate. So I was like, oh, I'm getting the 9800X3D. I might as well just get the everything we need to mod it. And then I was told this would not work. And I saw on Thermal Grizzly's page that they have a V2, which is this one, which I picked up back in December. I actually got this for Christmas. And this one has a much wider hole. Now, on Thermal Grizzly's website, it does say this does not support the 9800X3D at all. But on Reddit, they're saying it. So I'm putting the hands of my hard to get $500 CPU in Reddit's hands. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. I mean, we'll be able to like spot check it first. And with the help of Noctua. Air cooler is off. Perfect pace spread. Don't really have to manually spread, but yeah. So before we were like, oh my gosh, it wasn't as, it wasn't as good as you'd think. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Soder Bauer. It fits 100%. Up, you update your website, dude. You'll get so much more sales. Trust me. I'm giving you business advice here. Update the website. Yes. Okay, so now that this is all good here, let's move to this, which should be super duper easy. So this is for just the NHD15G2. I believe there's a couple other ones that this works for, but you're gonna unscrew this screw from the bottom right here. That's where the mounting with this knock to a screwdriver. And now you're gonna take your 3D printed thing. I'll leave a link down below to this. You're going to want to put it down. And then with an M4 by 10 screw, Noctua has this all on their website. You're going to want to screw this in and screw it into this. So let's go do that. So as you can see, it's screwed down. This allows actually the cold plate to go lower. So it can actually work now. So now I just have to apply liquid metal to the bottom and we're good to go. All right, let's see if the CPU power's on now. Turn it on. Wait. Maybe I need to flip on the power switch. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, let's see. Oh, it's booting, let's go. Most important test, let's see how much we can cool now with this. Let's start multi-core. Let's see. Let's get this thing to focus. Yo, yo, okay, okay. All right. So what we got 10C total, we're now pushing what power? 152 still but look a little bit lower temps nothing insane but like this is a difference now let's just see the score let's see what we get 
Okay, so it's a little bit lower. But within margin of error, with the score, lower attempts slightly. And also you've got to think that probably I can still tune this. I can run lower voltages, better curve optimizer. Now I'm pushing for ECLK. If you guys did enjoy, hit that like button down below, subscribe. If you want more links to everything that I've purchased and used, all the guides like the Noctua stuff, they'll be all down below. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Let me know if I should do this on a 9950X3D now when it comes out. 5090 can't be bottlenecked.